So, we're gonna rank all the four Nemesis boss fights in the Resident Evil 3 Remake. Let's go! Number 4, Biolanti Nemesis. Like I said, I don't even think this is a true boss fight, because it's so short and just very boring. So this Poison Ivy version of Nemesis can't move, but it also cannot be harmed by any of our normal weapons. Oh no, what are we going to do now? Well, thankfully, and very conveniently, Right behind us, there is a huge laser cannon that looks like it came straight out of Doom. And Jill grabs it, of course she immediately knows how to operate it, and of course it's also loaded. Like, how can she even hold that thing? Anyway, she shoots Nemesis with it, which does a ton of damage to him, but he's not fully done yet. So now, we have to recharge the cannon by manually pushing these containers or batteries on the sides of the room back in. And Nemesis tries to stop us, but he does a pretty bad job. There are these weak spots on his plant body that we need to destroy, and when all of them are destroyed, he falls unconscious for a pretty long time. And yeah, Jill takes the recharged cannon, shoots Nemesis, he falls forward, and we get a one second quick time event where we just have to walk forward. It's the weirdest looking thing. It seriously takes like one second at most, and then the cutscene continues. So stupid. And Jill shoves the laser cannon up Nemesis' mouth and finally completely kills him. This fight doesn't even get a score. It's barely a boss fight, and I just can't take it serious at all. I have to admit though, that this form of Nemesis, in terms of design, looks pretty freaking cool. Number three, flamethrower Nemesis. So is this first boss fight any good? No. He only does three attacks in this entire fight. The normal fire blast with his flamethrower, that one charging attack, and the one attack where he shoots up in the air and fire starts coming down around him. That's it. Plus, besides that one charging attack, Nemesis moves very slow in this fight. It seems like he isn't actually trying all that hard to kill her. And there's not even an actual second phase to this fight? After you explode his fuel tank by shooting it enough, Nemesis just drops to the ground and then stands back up in flames. And the rest of the fight remains the exact same. No new attacks or mechanics or anything. I find the charging attack especially stupid because sometimes he starts running towards you, but then he very awkwardly just stops. This is also by far the least challenging boss fight, except for the very last one, which I don't even want to count as a boss fight. I'd give this boss fight uh, a score of 3 out of 10 at most. It's pretty bad. Number 2, the clock tower fight. This second boss fight is much better than the first one in my opinion. I wouldn't call it good, but I think it's fine. This fish monster design of Nemesis is very cool. It looks pretty creepy, and it's very detailed as well. His attacks and movement animations also look really nice. And I don't know if it's just me, but I also like the sound design of his steps and his roars and his attacks. Like when he slams his claw into the ground for example. Gameplay wise, it's alright. Just like with the first fight, his attack variety is way too small and overall they are pretty easy to dodge. Even more than the first boss, because at least there was that one charging attack, which was sometimes tough to dodge. And most of the fight is just made up of spamming the shit out of him with the grenade launcher. He also gets stunned by every successful hit, so there can be parts where he just doesn't move until you stop blasting him with grenades. And this kinda makes this fight feel much less dynamic. I think they should have amped up Nemesis' poise and reduce his health bar. Oh my god, yeah, the health bar is ginormous. The fight takes way too long at the end. It feels like a drag to get through. The only really cool thing about this fight is part of the second phase where he starts jumping up the cars and run around until he climbs to the top of that large building and then jumps on you. And even that attack is super easy to avoid. But you can use the landmine grenades that explode on impact to catch him off guard while he's running on circles on top of the cars. Which I guess is something, you know, some cool mechanic I guess. I would give this boss fight a generous 5 out of 10. Number 1. Umbrella Lab Nemesis. At first, you fight him almost the exact same way you did in the second boss battle. However, now he has this fleshy tentacle arm, which he almost exclusively attacks you with. This phase is nothing special, nor is it all that challenging. Like in the second boss fight, you just have to spam the shit out of him with the grenade launcher. And then we get to a short cutscene, 
and it's Carlos. Man, that's a very great coincidence that he just happens to be here. And he's also at the exact spot where he needs to be. Because now we get to the second phase. And now Nemesis again starts running around in circles, just like in the second boss fight. And then he hides between one of these tanks. But conveniently, Carlos can tell us behind which tank he is hiding. And then we have to shoot that tank to electrify and stun Nemesis before he can surprise attack us. And while Nemesis is hiding, for some reason, two random zombies get dropped in the arena. I don't know how they got here, but I guess they're just here to make the fight a bit more challenging. But then again, you can easily just walk up to them, blast them with one shotgun round and continue the fight. Ah, this boss design feels pretty clumsy. Gameplay wise, this is fine I guess. It's certainly different from the other phases. Logistically, this phase doesn't make any sense, but I guess it's still nice to do something else for a bit. This is actually my personal favorite phase out of all the boss fights, because it's the most unique in terms of fighting strategy. However, I don't really get what Nemesis' goal with this is. Like, why is he hiding behind these things until he decides to jump at Jill? He also should realize, after getting zapped once, that this might not be the best way of surviving this fight. Besides, why are we even able to shoot these red buttons or activation fields on these tanks? Is there any in-universe explanation for why Umbrella built them that way? So you just continue fighting him in that manner, he does some different attacks, like charging at you and stuff, and at least this fight confronts you with some new mechanics. It also feels the least repetitive out of the three, technically four boss fights in this game. So this one I'm also giving a 5 out of 10. I don't think it's... because I don't think it's much better than the Clock Tower fight. It's just a bit more... fun? Yeah. 